Hello and welcome to Beta Flight Basics again and this time we're looking at the receiver tab so let's connect up. I've got this little Flyer 130 here ready to go because uh, it was small and fitted on my desk easy. If we connect up to that and we go to the receiver tab. The main thing to mention about the receiver tab is that, well there's a couple of things to mention. I think the main one is about these figures, this 1500 thing. I've got my Tyrannus here so let me just plug in a battery and we'll watch this so we can actually see what the ratings are. Basically what you're looking for is to have a midpoint of 1500 and we'll look at the, the pitch axis here. The bottom point of 1000, the midpoint of 1500 and the top point is 2000. You want that on basically all your channels. Of course out the box um, quite often this is not the case and they're going to be all over the place. So as it happens I've set up my roll axis back to its default settings. So let's go through and see what we do on a Tyrannus to sort that out. So I'm on my uh, fly egg model here. So if I go and then move along to the outputs channel, you can see, or well hopefully you can see here that if I get the right angle, I've got a bunch of things set up but in this initial line here, channel one, uh, is back to defaults. So the way this works on a Tyrannus is you go to this thing called sub trim and you basically change that until that goes to 1500 in the center. Now you'll see it flicker about occasionally and this is because the sticks aren't as accurate as going back purely to the middle but if it's on mainly that you're, you're okay. So the next one is you've got the endpoints. So to work out what your minimum endpoint is, if we press that and then we hold our roll all the way to the left and then we know that our minimum endpoint has to come up. So we've got that to a thousand. And then we go to our max endpoint. Again we'll hold that all the way up to max and we see it has to come down slightly. Just like that. And we now have got 1000, 1500, 2000. Now, in order to combat that slight jitter, we have got this thing called the RC dead band. That is, if you increase this, um, it counts each step as a slightly larger thing. So if you're just flickering between 1500 and 1501, if you raise this up slightly, it won't count that as movement. So it will sort of stay the same. Now, I have to say, when it's just flickering about between about 1500, 1502, either way, I don't really notice that at all. But if your one's massive, you might want to play with that one. I've never had to, I have to say. Now this is all well and good if you've got something like uh, a Tyrannus or similar radio with that sort of features to set your sub trim and to set your two endpoints. I reviewed not long ago this little Walkira Rodeo 110 and it came with this Devo 7 radio. Now it had a sub trim, but it didn't have endpoints. And what happened is, it was way out on the on the receiver, so it was missing about 200 points of resolution. If we set this um, back to normal, I say back to normal, back to its defaults. So what I've got there, I've still got my sub trim set approximately right. So when I set my endpoints back to defaults, if I go all the way down, I get 987. If I go all the way up, 2006. This is not too bad. In the previous thing, I had something like. Um, 1099 and um, something like 1911 it was really far out so what you can do in this situation is use a CLI command called RX range if we go onto that now so if you type RX range it'll give you what's what you've currently got set up and basically 1000 to 2000 is um, your default but if we change that for our channel, and our channel is 1, and we say RX range 0, and then we give it the low and high values we've got, which was 987, 2006. And you can check that gone in again by typing RX range. If we then save that, Connect. Go to the receiver tab.
and if we now look at the roll axis it goes 1000 to 2000 with 1500-ish around the middle. So that's a, do a good way of doing it if you don't have your endpoints that you can actually set. Now, the only other things worth pointing out in the receiver tab are the little bits and pieces you may want to change. You've got the channel mapping. There is actually a drop down here, not that I've ever got to use it. Basically, I've had this set up incorrectly, so it's been T-A-E-R, and I've had to, you can literally just type over it. So I think that's based about the type of radio you use rather than the um, type of mode you are, but if it's wrong, you can basically overtype that. Um, the only other thing to sort out here is the RSSI channel. Now, um, I already did a blog post about this. If you're using Freesco receivers and you've either got the telemetry receiver, uh, like a D4R no, or an X4R, you can get the telemetry back to the radio and then you can push it back down as a channel um, and then have RSSI on your OSD, um, which sounds more complicated than it is. Alternatively, you can get XM Plus or similar and you can flash the RSSI version on those and they will be on then channel 8 or channel 16, which then it would be auxiliary 4 or auxiliary 12. Um, so that works if you flashed RSSI or you've got RSSI as a PWM value that's going to a channel. If you've got actually hardwired on somewhere, that's a completely different thing and ignore that. And there you go. That is what I want to tell you about the receiver tab. I hope that's helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.